Hey guys and welcome back to the BS Society. So I kind of mentioned that I wanted to cover this in the co-op video, but um, I said that I would leave it for here. So the whole problem with the co-op situation that that occurred that caused the last video to be made really could have been avoided. Okay. One thing that I've noticed Genshin players often do is that they overlook characters mostly because they just don't study how the characters work. Okay. This is why it's important to understand how your characters truly work. Okay. You can't just use them. See, in Honky Impact 3rd, there's a battle suit for Sele called Shadow Tail Phantasm. Okay. Now, when you go to initially use it, if you don't look at how the ability really works for her ultimate, you're going to use it entirely wrong. Okay. Because most units don't have you know, many ways to use their ultimate evasion abilities or anything like that to, you know, basically use it without having to, like, dodge, right? So, for Shadowtail and Phantasm, when you use her ultimate, your damage increases pretty significantly, even without her weapon and stigmata set. But... The duration isn't really that long. You'll notice two bars down next to your health. That's called Veil. Now, the maximum Veil doesn't really last that long. It's probably like maybe six seconds, nine seconds, something like that. It's not that long, okay? Now, to extend the duration of the ultimate to its maximum, you either have to kill enemies or perform perform ultimate evasions okay now there is another way but you have to have Sele's main weapon what the main weapon does is when you use the weapon ulti during her ultimate you increase the veil in extending the duration now of course there is a maximum duration for the skill which is like 18 seconds or whatever which basically lasts the exact same amount of time as her stigmata sets you know, ability duration. So that's why the stigmata set is perfect for. Her. Because the stigmata set pretty much decreases enemy defense down by like 50%, which depending on what mission you're doing is actually pretty significant. And this is another case of weapons and stigmatas being very important for Honkai characters just to make them anywhere close to useful. But when you have her weapon, you have her stigmata set, you have her at triple S rank, and you know how to use her properly... Your damage is probably almost as good as Hesher the Void's damage at pure S rank with full gear. I mean, like, that's the kind of damage you're talking about. And really, let's just say that Sele, during her ultimate, pretty much matches the, dames, the, the same damage scale as Hesher of Thunder pretty much before she enters ulti, but even after she enters, you know. I mean, the, the damage just skyrockets when you use Sele correctly, okay? And, and this is the point that I want to make in this video, is that you have to use characters correctly to make them useful, okay? Now, how does this fall in line with Genshin Impact, okay? So, you know I use the original four character skill, or... The original four characters still. Okay. Animo Traveler, I use as a support DPS. Okay. The way I have her built is energy recharge, elemental mastery, and attack. And that's basically it. You know what I mean? If I can get crit rate and crit damage, cool. But getting those two stats would probably be pretty difficult on most artifacts. So I pretty much just have her built for damage and swirl damage. Right? Now... What I do is basically cast her tornado, and then I switch to Lisa and apply elemental damage. Usually what I like to do is use Kaya, apply cryo damage, or even use Amber and apply pyro damage. Sw switch to the Lumine, okay, cast her ultimate, 
and then switch back to Lisa and attack the enemies there in the tornado. And I get massive amounts of elemental damage. Okay. Venti can kind of be used the same way. Okay, again, energy recharge, elemental mastery, and attack. You know, you can get crit rate and crit damage if you want to, but basically those main three. And what you do is you cast his ultimate, he sucks enemies in, and you just apply a lot of elemental damage to all the enemies in there. Okay? Now, keep in mind that these two units can have their abilities out without them being on the field. Okay? So there are some characters where they're either support or DPS. Like Eula, you can't have any of her abilities out without her being on the field. You know, like the little sword or whatever that kind of... I forget what its main ability does, but basically it explodes if you switch characters or after it stays out for a little while. That's an example of Eula being a DPS only. Okay, because she can't have any abilities out while she's out in the field. Or she can't have any abilities out when she's off the field. Okay. Meanwhile, there are some characters like Ganyu who can keep their abilities out in the field. And this is why people like Tectone were calling Ganyu a support DPS. She's not a DPS. You're using her wrong if you're using her as a pure DPS. She is a support DPS. You should be building her for energy recharge because of how often you can have her ability out on the field. You should be building her for attack, crit rate, and crit damage. And if you want to, elemental mastery, but to be honest, she won't be the one applying it. You'll have somebody else applying elemental mastery. Okay? And this kind of goes back to that co-op situation in the other video. Okay? So somebody said Venti is useless. Now the reason why they said Venti is useless because there's no enemies to suck up. Okay? Azaha is too strong. Hold on, let me, let me, I'm having bad English in this video. Jesus Christ. Ashtaha is too big to suck up with Venti's elemental ability, okay? But that doesn't make him useless, okay? That just means he can't really act as a support unit, but he can still act as DPS. And again, you should be building him for DPS, not just support. Okay, you can have Elemental Mastery, Energy Recharge, and Attack. You don't just have to have Energy Recharge and Elemental Mastery. Okay? Because when you do that, you're building him for pure support, and then, yeah, he'll be useless. Okay? You should be building him for support DPS. Same thing goes for Ganyu, same thing goes for Animo Traveler. Okay? When you do that... Okay... Especially when Ashtaha is sitting there, you know, maybe casting like a temper tantrum ability or, you know, whatever other ability that he casts where he's basically standing there. You can cast Venti's ultimate and get massive amounts of damage pretty much for free. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is just cast your ultimate. The same thing goes for Anima Traveler. When you cast your ability at the perfect timing, basically you can get the tornado to go through the head all the way through the tail and get a pretty decent amount of damage out. You know, maybe not as much as Venti, but you can still get some decent amount of damage out, okay? Same thing goes for Ganyu. While Ashtaha is sitting there, you can cast Ganyu's ability and then switch to somebody else, you know, like a Geo character and get yourself a shield or another character and basically just put in massive amounts of damage. Practically for free, Okay. You know, so when you use characters in the correct way, you know, by studying them, looking at their abilities, all of that, when, when you know how a character actually works, that's when you get the maximum potential. Okay, and this can even go to like Raiden Shogun. Okay, for those of you that think that her ability is supposed to synergize off of Beto, we all know it doesn't, correct? However, there is a reason for this. And Mahoyo has said it's intentional. And people just don't know how to read her abilities. Okay? The reason why she can't be used with Beto is because when you use her ultimate, 
all of her attacks get turned into elemental burst damage. There are cases of this in Honky as well, where weapon abilities are turned into ultimates and not just standard weapon abilities. Okay? Now, what this means in Honky Impact is when you go to use the ability, all stage timers are stopped, and there's a nice little animation when you're casting the ultimate. Okay? The same thing goes for Genshin. Okay? So, when you use Raiden Shogun's ultimate, what happens is all of her abilities, normal, charge, attack, basically all of it gets turned into elemental burst damage. And I'm not sure, okay, and I want to look at it again, but I'm not sure if this transfers to other characters, but if it deed and does, then yeah, you can't use her with anybody. And I don't think it does because I believe the ability runs off when you switch characters. However, I don't think Beto's runs off when you switch characters, which means you basically get that nice little lightning chain. Now, I'm not sure if Beto's ultimate and the second ability, you, you know, like a, the non-ulti elemental ability for Raiden Shogun, I don't know if those two work together. Um, somebody can correct me on that. But, yeah, that's why Raiden Shogun and Beto don't work together. Because when when you use Beto's ulti, and then you use Raiden Shogun's ulti, Raiden Shogun's ulti will take the ultimate effect, and all of the elemental, or, you know, all of the attacks you deal will all be elemental burst damage. And all of it will be basically considered ultimate damage. And what happens, and people like Tectone didn't understand this, Sorry, I had to cut out a part of the video. I had some, like, flashing light behind me. I don't know who it was, but it, it major distraction. Anyways, back to the video. God, that's like the third time I've tried to record this video and had that happen. It's honestly pissing me off. Anyways. You know, so basically what I was saying was when you use Raiden Shogun's ability, all of her abilities, you know, all of her skills get turned into basically ultimate damage. They're no longer considered normal and charge attacks. Even though when you look at it, it says when you're dealing normal and charge attacks, so you would think it would work with Betos. But that's not the language that Mahoyo is using. Mahoyo is saying that her normal and charge attacks are elemental burst. That's what they're saying. So, you know, like I was saying, for people like Tectone who didn't understand the ability, that's what it's saying. It's saying that her normal and charge attacks get turned into elemental bursts. That's basically what it is. So it's basically as if you're using her ulti over and over and over and over and over. Right? And I'm going to get into Raiden Shogun, Kokomi, Yoimiya, and Ganyu. Because I feel like those characters had the biggest controversies. Right? Ganyu being Tectone calling her support DPS, which he was right about. Um, Yoi Mia controversy, the Raiden Shogun, and Kokomi controversy, okay? Because what the point I want to get across in these few videos is that you need to use the characters in the correct way. You need to study them. You can't just use them. You need to study them. You need to build them properly, and only then will you be able to use them properly. So, that is the plan for the next set of videos. Okay? And I know some people are going to disagree with me and probably say that I'm being a white knight for Mahoyo and blah, blah, blah. Trust me, there are some issues. Like, there is an issue with Raiden Shogun that I want to get into, but I want to keep this video about as long as it is. So, with that being said, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace. What have you done? I saw that! You, you, those poor ducks. It was for the pigeons. Go away. I never want to see you again. Ever. I'm telling mommy.